Well, good afternoon and welcome to this fourth in a series of Google Plus Hangout on air with SBA as part of National Small Business Week 2013. I'm Calvin Goings, your host for today's chat about lending and opportunities for small businesses and entrepreneurs across the U.S. We're excited to have a great panel of folks who will be talking to you about their experiences with lending at SBA. That includes Jean Hewlett with the U.S. Small Business Administration, where she serves as the Assistant Administrator for the Office of Capital Access. Also joining us is Nico Ridge, the CEO of Ninkasi Brewing Company in Oregon, and Dave Rader, SBA Lending Business Executive with Wells Fargo. As I mentioned a moment ago, SBA is celebrating National Small Business Week this week. In fact, this is the 50th anniversary as proclaimed by the president earlier in the week. And this really is an opportunity for us to celebrate the best of the best in small businesses across the U.S. Um, we're going to be taking your questions for this Google Plus Hangout on air via Twitter using the hashtag SBW2013. So if you've got a great question you'd like to pose to our panel, again, using the hashtag SBW2013. As, uh, as all of us know, small businesses are incredibly important to the U.S. economy. Today, about half of all working Americans work for a small business, and about two-thirds of all new net jobs over the past 15 years have come from small business. So we at the SBA are honored to play a role helping small businesses start, grow, and succeed. Well, let's get right down to it, talking about lending and what small businesses and emerging small businesses need to know about access to capital with the SBA. So Gene Hewlett, let's start with you. You know a little bit about banking, having worked in banking in the private sector and now heading SBA's Office of Capital Access. Tell us a little bit about your experience, what brought you to SBA, and then about the role that SBA uh, plays in helping entrepreneurs with access to capital. Sure, thank you, Calvin. Um, it's really an honor to be on this panel uh, because I think that providing access to capital is one of the most important things that the SBA does to support small businesses. And as Calvin mentioned, I was a, a lender as a commercial uh, banker before I joined the SBA in 2009. And the reason I joined the agency was, as many of you can remember, there was a uh, credit crisis and the banks were having difficulty providing the kind of credit to support to many small businesses. And that's really where the SBA steps in. And uh, I was honored to join the administration at that critical time where we were able to step in and work with our lending partners to guarantee loans to keep credit flowing to small businesses. Uh, and that's what we've done over the last uh, two years. We had record lending in SBA, uh, record SBA lending support, $30 billion to uh, small businesses last year, $30 billion a year before, uh, historic highs for the SBA. So we are there to provide credit when businesses cannot get credit elsewhere. And we do that by partnering with banks. Uh, we have three major program areas. One is our 7A lending program, where we guarantee loans that banks would not be able to make otherwise without the support of the U.S. government. And that's called our 7A loan program. Uh, the other program is our uh, program that supports long-term fixed assets, called the 504 program. And that's to finance um, real estate or our long-term long fixed assets like machinery and equipment. And again, it helps to provide a structured financing where the banks participate with 50% of the financing and the SBA participants participates in a subordinated role of 40%, enabling the business to get much more higher leverage on their assets than they would conventionally. And then the third program is our microloan program, which provides the small dollar loans, loans under $50,000 to the startup business that isn't quite ready to be working with a bank. They need a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit looser structure. They may have some aspects to their business that the banks can't get comfortable with. And that uh, is our microloan program. And we provide that through microloan intermediaries around the country. So those are our core lending programs. We have about $100 billion in loans that we have supported, that we support currently. And uh, this year, year to date, we're up about 10% uh, over last year's volume. So we know that demand is still there. Absolutely. So some very impressive numbers. So anything from a $20,000 micro loan to a, a, a new beauty salon that might be opening up to a $2 million loan for uh, a business looking to capitalize and to expand and up to a $5 million loan for someone who wants to build a new building or buy heavy processing equipment for their manufacturing business and everything in between. Absolutely. We do manufacturers, we do service companies, we do mom and pop shops, everything in between. 
Great. Well, that was very helpful uh, as we set up and talk about a, a success story at SBA using some of those tools and resources. So happy to have Chris Ridge with us, the CEO of NIMP Company in the state of Oregon, right out here in the great Pacific Northwest. Uh, so, grew up in Eugene, uh, went to the East Coast for school. I read something about a Ford Ranger pickup. So, Nikos, tell us a little bit about your small business story and specifically how your business was able to leverage the tools and resources from SBA to grow into the phenomenal company that you've become today. Tell us a little bit about your story. Definitely. Um, we're in the craft beer business, which is a really fun industry, and it also happens to be a very capital and facilities intensive industry. So, uh, we have worked through the course of several different phases of expansion with the SBA on multiple occasions. Uh, we started in 2006 and uh, originally just my partner Jamie and myself and have grown to uh, 85 uh, team members in the last close to seven years now and have gone through the process of three separate um, escalated tiers of expanding and in each case have worked with the SBA uh, through their 504 program to uh, help to leverage the equity that we put back into the business and allow us to uh, grow our facilities and uh, grow our equipment needs along with the demand that was growing for our products. So I can honestly say that uh, we definitely wouldn't be where we're at today without the support of the SBA. It allowed us um, to take those precious dollars when we were uh, a startup but a high growth company and leverage them into the ability to continue to expand and uh, every step of the way they've been there to support that, support the other uh, local and regional lenders that we've worked with and um, it's really been a critical part of our success. That's great. You said you have 85 employees now? We do 85 with uh, I believe there's five open positions right now so we'll be crossing the 90 threshold uh, probably in, before the end of the summer. So you've got a, you've got a, a help wanted sign out as we speak so to, so to say. Indeed, indeed, yep. And they're good jobs, good manufacturing jobs uh, here locally, and uh, we create a great product that we're able to uh, send around the West, Western United States. That's great. That's great. Thank you for, for sharing part of your story with us and the folks that are watching. So, Gene Hewlett, let's go back to you and talk about kind of this network that SBA is part of. We, we're talking about the lenders in, in, right now, but there's, there's that support structure as well. Tell us a little bit about the resource partners that are out there and how those resource partners help small businesses get ready for financing in some of the, the loan programs that you discussed a few minutes back. Sure. Uh, one of the key parts of uh, the SBA's mission is to help entrepreneurs, and we do that through business counseling. And our resource partners include the small business development centers that are in every state in the country. It's a partnership between the SBA, the federal government, state government, and universities to pr provide free business counseling services to businesses to help them succeed. We also partner with SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives, who are the mentors for America's business, and they provide all sorts of resources in counseling and partnering and mentoring to small businesses uh, frequently on a long-term basis and for startups to really provide their expertise to these, uh, these businesses that they, uh, they help grow. And then we have the Women's Business Center, which is again another free business counseling service that provides a lot of hand-holding and counseling to businesses, not just women-owned businesses, but a lot of rural businesses that are not close to a university structure. So they're great resource partners and the way we work with them and the way the banks work with them is frequently a bank will look to a business for their business plan. They want to see an articulate business plan that is reasonable in their projections, that has structured financial statements that they can help assess the rest of the institution in providing the financing. And our business partners, our resource partners help provide that kind of support so that the, uh, the loan applicant is credit ready when they enter the bank. That's great. So whether they're uh, an existing business owner that maybe has their business plan up here but hasn't translated it to a written document yet, uh, someone who's thinking about going into small business or someone who's been around in business for five years and is now ready to go after that 504 loan uh, to buy a building of their own, they should really check out one of those small business development centers, those women's business centers, SCORE, chapters, et cetera, to make, get that fresh set of eyes to help them with their business plan in right. their small business you journey. You want to be putting your best foot forward when you're talking to the bank, not having the bank ask the questions and that you then go, oh, I should have thought about that. The, 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 the resource partner will walk you through all those steps and make sure you're prepared so you have the best uh, uh, package and impression when you go to the bank. 
It's great. And I also had a chance to talk to one of our, our local centers here in the Northwest. Apparently, as part of the Affordable Care Act and the tax credit provisions that are available to small businesses now, they can also uh, soon visit their local uh, resource partner to get more hands-on information about the Affordable Care Act and some of the small business benefits that that legislation has. Absolutely. Uh, they're a great resource. Great resource all the way around. Well, we're also joined right next to you by Dave Rader uh, with the Wells Fargo, which is, as I believe, SBA's large lender of the year. Is that right, Dave? That's right, Kelvin. Hello, well, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. We look forward to you doing even more next year to support small businesses. But tell us a little bit about what you do at Wells Fargo and, and the role that Wells Fargo, and your perspective as a lender, about what you're looking for when a small business walks into one of your branches. Sure, Calvin, thank you. Um, thanks for the opportunity, and uh, I really appreciate being on this uh, really cool technology. Uh, it's, it's pretty good for, uh, for, a, for a banker here. So, uh, I run the SBA uh, lending business for, for Wells Fargo. We have uh, close to 400 team members uh, across the country that are uh, positioned to help customers uh, succeed financially, and we absolutely love using the SBA programs to help get more capital to small business owners so that they can grow and add jobs to help the economy prosper. So we, we do that by, by working all of the different SBA programs, like Gene said, uh, the 7A program where we use that program for, for um, term lending. So f purposes for expanding a business yeah, Dave, talk, talk, tell us a little bit about what term lending means. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Term lending is typically uh, where a borrower pays uh, a monthly payment for a loan that they use for uh, purchasing a, a fixed asset, either real estate or equipment, um, both uh, you know for for expanding their business, for starting a business. So any kind of, of purchase of, of a fixed asset, we would want the customer to, to obviously have the cash flow uh, to pay that loan back over a period of time. Uh, five years, 10 years, and 25 years is the maximum we can go with a 7A loan. So we use all of the tools that the SBA has for for um, the 7A program. We're also very big in the 504 real estate lending program and that program's used to help customers uh, acquire a, a new building or renovate a building or purchase uh, and construct a building. All of those tools we help customers uh, grow their business uh, and get more capital to help them win um, so, so that they can grow the business and add jobs. We see these tools as absolute great tools to help customers save cash because a lot of the SBA programs uh, preserve capital and, and cash for business owners. So with the lower down payments offered by the SBA, um, as little as 10%, and the longer terms to repay the loan, that helps borrowers with lower monthly payments. All of those things uh, preserve cash for, for our borrowers, and we all know that, that cash flow is, is king to, to helping a business succeed. Absolutely. And I don't, want you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, we're talking tens of millions of dollars that Wells Fargo has uh, worked with SBA on this past year. Um, and made uh, businesses, whether that be supporting existing businesses or the expansion of businesses, a possibility. So thank you to the work that we have and the relationship we have. Uh, and, but as I mentioned, I'm sure uh, Associate Administrator Hewlett next to you has probably been encouraging you to help us do even more next year uh, as we enter the new fiscal year. Well, Calvin, uh, I'm proud to say that Wells Fargo has helped a lot of customers. Uh, and we have been the number one uh, 7A dollar lender for the past four years. And we have been the first lender in the agency's history to, to lend more than a billion dollars in the last two years. So right, right. our goal is, is absolutely uh, to, to get out there and help customers succeed uh, in their financial dreams, to, to help them uh, you know, make their, their dreams occur and happen 
and, and absolutely help them, uh, like Nikos, to, to start a business, to grow the business, and expand the business. We absolutely. think that is a great use of, of these programs, and the more we can do to help our economy win, the better. And in the process, puts our friends and neighbors back to work, improves our communities, makes the economy stronger, and puts it on a more sustainable long-term path to a full and prosperous recovery. So speaking of Nikos, Nikos, tell us a little bit about your uh, specific process, kind of your application from, you know, from start to finish. Talk to us a little bit about your experience with the, the local lenders and uh, how long did it take and what should someone who's watching this right now, what should they be thinking about? What, maybe what's the one thing you wish you would have known uh, when you started uh, your application process for one of your loans? Judging by the camera, I think that Nikos might be having a camera issue, Calvin. It looks like, that does not look like Nikos below, you're right. Um, all right, well let's, uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure Nikos will be coming back, so Gene, what why don't we talk a little bit about some of those other options? You know, we've been talking with Dave uh, about the 7A and 504 loan program uh, in particular, phenomenal programs. Talk maybe a little bit about our, our work with CDFI, uh, our micro loan programs. You know, what are some of the thresholds, some of the opportunities, and the the folks in that space, and, and what viewers uh, should be thinking about as as options uh, for those programs as well. Sure. Um, one of the things that was a casualty of the credit crisis is that we did see small dollar lending fall off and we saw lending in our underserved communities fall off and as the credit uh, uh, became more available and we've had more businesses get support we have seen that support going to larger dollar uh, size loans more established businesses that have more assets for collateral so we wanted to make sure that we were providing credit support for all of the market segments and uh, to address any market gaps. So we have been working very closely with the nonprofit mission-based lenders that are part of the U.S. government network, uh, community development financial institutions, CDFIs, or community development corporations, CDCs, or SBA microlenders. These are nonprofit mission-based lenders that have a deep relationship in their communities with many of these smaller startup entrepreneurs in the inner cities or in rural America that may not get ac traditional access to capital. So uh, we are now able to work with those organizations to guarantee loans up to $250,000 through a program called Community Advantage. That is a 7A loan program, but it is a program delivered by these nonprofit mission-based lenders who have a great opportunity to provide the financing with our programs, but partner it with the kind of uh, counseling and support that these nonprofit organizations have access to. So that's one of our, our, our critical tools. We have about 65 community advantage lenders across the country. We're bringing new ones on every day. And uh, if, if, a, if a business is having a hard time accessing capital with a conventional lender like Wells Fargo or, or another bank, they may want to go on their website, our website, sba.gov backslash the state that they reside in, and find out through our district offices who the community advantage lenders are in their region as well as who our micro lenders are. Um, again, these are organizations whose mission are not only to provide capital but to provide counseling hand in hand. And those are great tools that uh, we can provide to the, uh, the smallest and the startup businesses. Absolutely. And you know, some of the other programs that come to mind are our Patriot Express Loan Program uh, for the men and women of our armed forces or their family members who might be interested in, in going into business, as well as the relationship SBA has and the, the Obama administration has with the National Franchise Association, kind of helping ensure that veterans have a chance to, as such great dedicated uh, employees, and they make great dedicated entrepreneurs, to give them all the tools they, they, they need and they can get and uh, operate a successful business. In fact, I think about our Boots to Business program and our, our mentoring programs that, that we offer. So, can I, can I jump in please, there? Yes. Thank, thank you for bringing that up. Um, because Patriot Express is sort of a subset of our 7A program. And again, it is a program that is for veterans, but it's not just the veteran themselves, it's also for the veteran's spouse or family member who's running the business if the veteran is deployed. Uh, it's a great program, and it again provides a guarantee partnering with the banks. And what we have done uh, recently on um, over the Memorial Day air, uh, holiday, we announced at Fort Bragg that uh, our top 
120 lenders across the country that support veterans through our loan programs have made a pledge to increase their lending to veterans 5% each year for the next five years to support our, our um, warriors as they return to this uh, civilian life. And we know that veterans disproportionately are successful entrepreneurs and they are disproportionately starting franchises as well. So between our, our partnership with the Franchise Association, our partnerships with banks like Wells who made this commitment, we're making an effort to reach the veteran community to let them know about the programs that are available to support their entrepreneurial dreams. And that's really important at this time in their lives. Great. So Calvin? Please, Dave. Uh, yes. Dave, um, so w Wells Fargo is absolutely proud to be part of the veteran pledge. Uh, we sure hope we can do more than 5% over the, over the next few years. But that's the beauty of a lot of the SBA programs. So we can, we can reach out to small business owners, whether they're startups and in their infancy, and we can also help with the programs, those companies that have been uh, very successful and around for, for many years. So again, most, um, most veterans need capital. Uh, Woman-owned businesses need capital. Minority uh, small business owners need capital. The SBA programs can cover a lot of ground here. And again, it's all about helping the banks um, reach out, expand their credit boxes that for, for customers uh, who can't get loans conventionally and expand the, the opportunities for, for our owners uh, to, to grow and, and get jobs. And you know, one of the things that um, you, know, you do hear still is that there is uh, l borrowers who are still looking. And as, as uh, the economy moves forward, you know, I think one of the things that's important to remember is where we've been and where we could have been. You know, if, if folks think back just to February of 2009 and the economic situation we were in, you know, with losing 750,000 jobs every single month in the U.S., a credit market that was completely frozen, an economy that was in a tail dive, and most Americans worried about a Great Depression, and then because of the Recovery Act and the Small Business Job Act that President Obama signed into law, you know, we at SBA received some new tools to help put credit in the hands of good, viable small businesses. Whether that was raising our government guarantees so that banks and credit unions would be more likely to lend in the, the worst lending environment since the 1930s, or the ability to waive our, our fees so that borrowers could keep more of, of their own money in their pocket. So Nikos, tell us a little bit about uh, that loan process. Uh, you know, moving forward now from February of 09 to where we are today and the three successful loans that you've had and going from 85 to 90 employees, talk to us a little bit about uh, your lending experience, uh, how long it took, and if you had to do it all over again, uh, what would you wish you would have known or what would you like to tell to somebody, a prospective borrower out there? Um, so from my experience, I think going into it uh, aware of the process and of the time frames and also um, just having a sense that, you know, it is a process that's pretty involved and that you should uh, be prepared to uh, spend a lot of time meeting the needs of the program and submitting the paperwork and, uh, and working in partnership with your lender. Um, I think as long as you go in expecting that, you won't get frustrated with the process and uh, you really just kind of go through the steps until it's complete. Definitely working with a bank who's experienced in working with the SBA um, helps a lot. So we've worked with a, a few different banks through the process and um, certainly some of them have uh, a more developed uh, relationship and understanding of the whole process and can help explain that to you ahead of time and then also really be helpful in facilitating the loan uh, process. And you know, at different levels of complexity are going to take different amounts of time. Um, I think you know we've gone between you know anywhere from eight months to a year and a half but a lot of that has to do with uh, getting to the certain uh, points within the project that are necessary to for instance identify specifically the pieces of equipment that you're going to be buying and uh, some of those things so it's kind of tied in uh, the phase of where the project itself is at but generally it's not overly burdensome it's just a process of uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and um, ultimately 
they really work to help you accomplish what you set out to accomplish. So in a lot of cases, too, the information that they're looking for, some of the more specific projections, some of the more specific uh, information about the equipment and the project and the appraisal process that you're going through helps you to better understand even your own project. So a lot of that detail, while it may seem tedious at, at some points, it overall, I think, helps uh, even helps the business to gain a, a deeper understanding of their process by going through all of that. We didn't ask you for your blood type. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Calvin, I, I'd like to, to uh, just comment that. Yeah, please. You know, I think what um, Nico's explained was really the process in a 504 loan, which is project finance largely. You know, you're doing the acquisition, building, and, and equipping of a new business, a, a, a new project which the 504 program, the, the great advantage of it is that it enables 90% financing, which when Nico started his business in 2009, um, there were not a lot of banks who were going to do 90% financing on commercial real estate. I don't know if there's many banks that do it today. So the 504 program really is the advantage, so it helps the entrepreneur have you know about 10% into the deal, the banks can have 50% into the deal, and then the SBA is subordinate at 40% which makes the banks comfortable, it gives cash flow to the borrower who is trying to, to start the business, and we can get a project underway from soup to nuts, from you know, groundbreaking all the way to opening the doors and having the equipment installed. Our 7A program, different from 504, can be used everything from working capital, revolving lines of credit, or just, I'm sorry, when you don't move in the offices of the SBA, the lights go out and our lights just I'll went out. Back. So we just want folks who are watching to know that we're doing our part to save money under sequestration in yeah. the SBA offices. So we occasionally turn the lights off to save a few dollars. You were talking about this, the 7A loan program. So the 7A loan program. Um, and one of the things to know about the 7A loan program is we have uh, two different type of lenders. We have uh, our regular 7A lenders and then we have delegated lenders or preferred lenders like Wells Fargo is a preferred lender. And um, so when you get into timing of loans, a, a preferred lender can take all that information and make the loan decision and uh, uh, apply the SBA guarantee without submitting it to the SBA. So typically that is a, is a little bit faster process um, for on the 7A side. So a borrower should know when they're looking at doing a loan, deciding if it's uh, 504 or whether it's going to be 7A and what kind of financing they need and then talk to a couple of banks or talk to our district office staff or a resource partner to get some advice on what type of lenders in their community have an appetite for their type of business? Not every 7A lender may have an interest, for example, in breweries, whereas um, you know there may be others that are. And we can direct you to the lenders that are using our programs for different types of financing so that we, we kind of cut down the, the lead time. And again, working with a, an experienced SBA lender does help accelerate the process. So Dave, uh, as we're getting close uh, close to the end of our, our show here, if you had a couple words of wisdom to somebody who may be watching right now, uh, who's been in business for a couple of years, is, is thinking about expanding, whether it be for product line or a physical presence, what would be a, a couple words of wisdom that you might want to offer them? Calvin, so uh, an experienced business owner can absolutely save cash flow and down payment equity by using an SBA program. So it's all about us helping the borrower meet their financial goals and preserving cash as best we can to, to help them structure a loan as best we can for their needs. So I would say that it, it goes back to the, the C's of credit. Um, so coming into the bank prepared, as Gene said, to know what they want uh, for, for you know, the purpose of the loan, for the collateral that they can provide for the loan. And really what we want to see from a banker's perspective is that business's ability to repay the loan over a period of time. And so the more prepared the customer is to, to help us understand their vision and their dreams and, and how they're going to pay the loan back, that's really the essence of, of what we, uh, what we want to know. And, and so I would, I would encourage the, the borrower to come in and talk to us. 
talk to their banker, establish a relationship. We have a lot of products that we can help them sell, uh, sell to them to, to help them uh, grow their business, preserve cash, and, and to help them uh, manage uh, all of the risks that they have as business owners. Great. Well, Dave and Gene, thank you for joining us from SBA headquarters in Washington, D.C. And Nikos, thank you for joining us. I know you had to sneak away for a few minutes. I think you had a, a batch of pale ale that needed your full and undivided attention. So we're glad that you could, could make it back with us. And thank you to those who are watching. As I mentioned earlier, this is National Small Business Week. To learn more, you can go to sba.gov. The uh, three previous uh, Google Plus Hangout on airs are um, online as well, as well as all the events that have occurred thus far this week and that will be happening uh, tomorrow uh, as well. Uh, you know, the, the total of all this hard work uh, from Nikos and all the lending that, that Wells Fargo has done and, and a great partner network out there of other lenders and the hard work and grit of entrepreneurs across the U.S., you know, we have now had over 39 months in a row of month after month of positive job growth in the U.S. Over 7 million private sector jobs have been created. In fact, that's the quickest grade of, of growth since 2005. And in American manufacturing, which we've talked a lot about today on this program, you know, we're seeing real net new jobs for the first time in American manufacturing, led largely by a smart, uh, long-term decision to restructure the auto industry by the administration, real new net jobs in the manufacturing sector for the first time since the late 1990s. So our hats at the SBA are off. Uh, hat tip to those entrepreneurs out there who are working hard, making ends meet, and putting our friends and neighbors back to work in the process. Thanks for joining us, and SBA.gov is a great resource going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.